May 7th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Acts chapter 17 of the New Testament. After they traveled through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a Jewish synagogue. Paul went to the Jews in the synagogue, as he customarily did, and on three Sabbath days he addressed them from the scriptures, explaining and demonstrating that the Christ had to suffer and to rise from the dead, saying, This Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Christ. Some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, along with a large group of God-fearing Greeks and quite a few prominent women. But the Jews became jealous, and gathering together some worthless men from the rabble in the marketplace, they formed a mob and set the city in an uproar. They attacked Jason's house, trying to find Paul and Silas to bring them out to the assembly. When they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some of the brothers before the city officials, screaming, These people who have stirred up trouble throughout the world have come here too, and Jason has welcomed them as guests. They are all acting against Caesar's decrees, saying, There is another king named Jesus. They caused confusion among the crowd and the city officials who heard these things. After the city officials had received bail from Jason and the others, they released them. The brothers sent Paul and Silas off to Berea at once, during the night. When they arrived, they went to the Jewish synagogue. These Jews were more open-minded than those in Thessalonica, for they eagerly received the message, examining the scriptures carefully every day to see if these things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, along with quite a few prominent Greek women and men. But when the Jews from Thessalonica heard that Paul had also proclaimed the word of God in Berea, they came there too, inciting and disturbing the crowds. Then the brothers sent Paul away to the coast at once, but Silas and Timothy remained in Berea. Those who accompanied Paul escorted him as far as Athens, and after receiving an order for Silas and Timothy to come to him as soon as possible, they left. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, his spirit was greatly upset because he saw the city was full of idols. So he was addressing the Jews and the God-fearing Gentiles in the synagogue and in the marketplace every day, those who happened to be there. Also some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers were conversing with him, and some were asking, What does this foolish babbler want to say? Others said, He seems to be a proclaimer of foreign gods. They said this because he was proclaiming the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. So they took Paul and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new teaching is that you are proclaiming? For you are bringing some surprising things to our ears, so we want to know what they mean. All the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there used to spend their time in nothing else than telling or listening to something new. So Paul stood before the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I see that you are very religious in all respects. For as I went around and observed closely your objects of worship, I even found an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. Therefore, what you worship without knowing it, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by human hands. Nor is he served by human hands as if he needed anything, because he himself gives life and breath and everything to everyone. From one man he made every nation of the human race to inhabit the entire earth, determining their set times and the fixed limits of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope around for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move about and exist, and even some of your own poets have said, For we too are his offspring. But since we are God's offspring, we should not think the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human skill and imagination. Therefore, although God has overlooked such times of ignorance, he now commands all people everywhere to repent because he has set a day on which he is going to judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he designated, having provided proof to everyone by raising him from the dead. Now when they heard about the resurrection from the dead, some began to scoff, 
But others said, we will hear you again about this. So Paul left the Areopagus. But some people joined him and believed. Among them were Dionysius, who was a member of the Areopagus, a woman named Damaris, and others with them. God, I love how in today's reading, you are teaching us some of the finer points of discipleship, that as we go out and tell people about you, we need to have discernment, discernment of when to speak, discernment of when not to speak, and interestingly enough, discernment of what to do in between. And Paul's speech made at the Areopagus is such a perfect example of that. Within that speech, he uses more than once uh, words of the writers and poets and philosophers of that time, people that the people listening would have known and felt comfortable with the words he was using. So just like I do in marketing, speaking the language of the people buying from me, Paul was going in and he was using language that they were already familiar with. Uh, words and phrases that they were already familiar with, people's ideas that they were already familiar with, and using them for your glory. We need to keep this in mind when we're talking to people. Not everybody needs the full-blown, <laughs> can I pray for you? Can I tell you about the gospel story? Can I get you a Bible? Can I start you on a Bible study pitch? <laughs> Some people simply need comfort. Some people just need a hug. Some people just need you to sit down and, and talk to them in, in their language. Uh, I find sometimes a lot of that, for me, since I work with a lot of the teenage girls, involves me hanging out th at the mall with them. You know, just going shopping and, and getting to casually have conversations about you uh, in the middle of a world that's very comfort comfortable to them. Inviting them to church to them doesn't make sense. To them, uh, it is not a fun place to be. It's not a comfortable place for them to be. Um, but being in their world and using some of their terminology and their um, references, whether it be music or fashion or whatever, uh, then we have an opportunity to talk to them in their own language about you. So I love this, this speech. Not only is it a beautiful speech, obviously, that Paul gives about you and your son but it it speaks volumes that we can use the things of this world to glorify you and that the people we're speaking to rarely are they in the same spot we are uh, the same position in that path of a walk with you we have to keep in mind at one point we were just like them we may not have even known you existed or even cared that you existed and we need to remember that and meet them wherever they are in those situations so that their hearts can open up and hear the word that you have spoken to them. God, thank you so much for giving us the blessing of discernment, of strength, of the right words to say, um, and giving us opportunities as well to take advantage of those times where we get to tell people about you. In your son's name I pray. Amen.